Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Uh, time once again for my pseudo cast, you know. And for today, um, because I was pretty much out of ideas, couldn't really think of anything else. Um, I just set it up, and because this was probably uh, one of the first things that came up when I when I went on YouTube, uh, most beautiful cherry blossom in Tokyo. Uh, taking another walk in Japan. Gonna, yeah, I'll probably want to turn that down a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it should be a little better. Maybe, maybe up just a smidge. And um, this one here might go a little over long. Um, I do have a fair amount, I have to say. So, um, to start with, and this is a very important one right here. Um, as of this morning, one of my cast videos got a copyright claim on it, so I had to delete the video immediately. Um, and in fact, uh, the copyright claim said the same thing. It was saying pending deletion or, or pending removal or something like that. So, um, so my, uh, my advice to anybody who's watching my cast on YouTube, you might want to, I don't know if you can, I don't know if it's possible, but, uh, if it's something that you'd want to watch again, be sure to download it. Um, download it, or um, find a program like OBS or some kind of cap, some kind of capture software, some kind of video capture software, and then just uh, rec and then record the video, and that way you'll you'll have it on you'll have it available. Because like, who knows how many more of my casts that YouTube's gonna delete, or I should say how many. Who knows how many of my uh, cast videos are gonna get um uh, are gonna get flagged for copyright? So, I mean, right now this is just only one video, but like, like I said a few seconds ago, who knows how many more of these they're gonna end up uh, claiming, copyright claiming. Excuse me. So. Is it just me, or is it still a little loud? Still a bit on the loud side. Let me turn it down a smidge. Okay. All right. Hopefully that should that. Hopefully that did it. But anyway, like I said. Um, and for those that don't, for those that don't know, um, or that have never um seen any of my other casts or ever seen any of the other content that I've uploaded over the years, when when one of my videos gets a copyright claim. I just delete it immediately. I don't bother appealing it or trying to fight it or anything like that. Um, it's just a lot easier and quicker for me to just delete the thing. So, and a, a, um, a YouTuber named Emperor Lemon, he actually did he did a three part he did a three part series on copyright, which is long story short, it's a rip off. I mean, I haven't, I haven't officially, I haven't officially tried this, but I'm pretty sure that uh, if I was to take a video called paint drying, yeah, they they actually have videos like that, uh, paint drying videos, videos of paint drying. There's probably um, there's probably ads all over them. So yeah, they'll stick, they'll they'll copyright claim anything. Um, now that I think about it, maybe there, I think there's videos out there that are literally nothing. Just nothing but black screens. Like, I think um, one of my playlists that I tried to make some odd years ago, because I didn't want to, I wanted a few seconds of silence in between each video. I actually had, it was like five seconds of silence or something like that. I had it in uh, each one of my videos. But yeah, I bet, um, I bet um, they've even stuck ads all over that stuff there too, so. Oh, and uh, before I continue on, I'm going to crack open a can of V8 Energy Orange Pineapple flavored. So, get ready for some pops. <laughs> B 
But yeah, it's 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 pretty lame the way the uh, copyright system works. Even if it's just a few seconds of offending material, my entire video gets flagged and they stick ads all over the video. All on account of a few seconds of copyrighted material. It's one of the reasons why my my primary um my primary my primary source of uploads is Twitch. Because um one, they're only gonna one, all they're gonna do is they're just gonna mute my content. And even then, they're only gonna mute that offending piece of material. They're not gonna mute all my entire video. So they're a lot cooler about it than YouTube. So but once again, um just to let every just to let everybody know that's uh, watching my cast on YouTube, um it it probably be to your advantage if you uh if you were to somehow be able to download my cast or use some kind of uh, video capture software. Like I use OBS which I'm from uh, from my few experiences with uh, with other cast software OBS is the best so use something like that to capture my videos and save them that way you know again because again who knows how many or more of these videos these cast videos of mine are gonna get copyright claimed so and uh, none of the, none of the, and, and uh, most of these casts that I'm doing nowadays, have no music in them. No, this it's what you're seeing here. Just walking down the street videos, and they're still and the one that got copyright claimed. I can't remember exactly what city it was, but it was a it was a walking down the street video, and it still got copyright claimed. So, so like I said, all all of a sudden, my cast videos might all of a sudden start dropping like flies now. So. Sorry to sound like a broken record. Um, you guys might want to, if you guys want to keep, if you guys want to keep these, you might want to download them somehow. So, but moving right along, um, I watched another, um, I watched another uh, video from a channel called Not Just Bikes. He's a, um, I think he's a civil engineer. Who's uh, a lot of his videos involve uh, city planning and that kind of thing. Um, this time around, he uh, did a video that really struck home with me: noise pollution. Although, although my, uh, mine, uh, mine's a little, little different. I've been, uh, I've been forced to listen to shitty pop music at my at various jobs I worked at for about 30 years now. So, noise pollution is something I know quite a bit about. And I, but I, I, I definitely got what he was saying though about, about how bad cities are. It's the cities themselves aren't what's bad. It's all the cars, all the cars and the noise they make. You know, and and I, I've, I've been on and, and I'm, I totally, totally agree with this. It's one of the reasons why I'm a night person. I don't like being out during the day. There's too much fucking noise going on. Too many cars and too many belligerent people. You know, and, you know, overcrowding is an issue. Again, too much, you know, too much noise from cars, traffic, and people. All the cars and stuff really, really, you know, stresses people out. It causes stress, and you know, the overcrowding does the same thing. Too much chatter going on. You know, it tend, again, it tends to stress people out, and it, you know, causes a lot of arguing and frustration and whatnot. So once again, this is probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm a night person. Less uh less noise pollution. But um once again, he was ba he lives in uh he lives in the Netherlands. I think he lives in Amsterdam. But yeah, he was saying it's like a paradise there because it's so quiet. Like um I think, uh, I, cars are they're not cars aren't forbidden in the city. But they're they're discouraged. I think a a lot of the a lot of the um I think a good chunk of uh, a good chunk of the cities in um a good chunk of the cities in the Netherlands are um are sidewalks and bike and bike paths and um one or two lane or two lane streets 
with like really low speed limits and stuff like that. So it isn't like here in the states where the majority of uh, the roads around the majority of the uh, the streets where I live aren't even streets. They're basically strodes, a uh, kind of a cross between a street and a road. And for those um and for those that don't know what I mean by that, um the the not just bikes guy he kind of explains it kind of explains it in better detail but basically roads in the United States are um, highways and freeways you know you know design you know high speed limits designed to get you from like from one big city to another quickly you know and then streets you know streets are basically yeah the the video is the video isn't showing it but uh, a street would basically be like a like a two lane a two lane road or just something you know something with two lanes two lanes and a low speed limit and sometimes with sidewalks on on one or both sides you know something like that a, a street designed to keep the trap you know keep the traffic to a minimum designed to make it so it's actually more efficient to walk or take a bike than it is to actually take a car but that's a street a strode is a hybrid between the two. Strodes are what I got around where I live, and it's actually pretty dangerous. I, I think I said this in a, I said this in yesterday's cast too. Just for me to, in order for me to get to a location that's like a, that's like an eighth of a mile away, like if I have to go, like a, there is literally a convenience store. Um, or I actually have two convenience stores where I live. There's one that is right across the street from me. Um, I can, I can, I can sort of, kind of safely walk across it because I have, I again, I have to walk across a strode to get to the convenience store. But there's also another. I have another convenience store that is literally, I live up, I live on a, I live on a road, or i my apartment complex is right next to a road, basically a freeway. But see. It's not very efficient for me to walk across that, to walk across that strode to get there. No wait. Did I say it was a? Did I say it was a, a road or highway? No, it's a strode. Yeah, it's a, it's a four lane strode. I could, I, you know, there's again, there's this convenience store that's across this four lane strode. My apartment complex is. I'm like I could walk, I could walk there, but the thing of it is, it actually would be too dangerous for me to do so. That means I would have to take my, I would have to get in my car, do this, uh, take this quarter mile scenic route to the stoplight, wait at the stoplight if it's, you know, if, it, if the light is red, sit there and wait at that stoplight until it turns green, then drive across the strode into the convenience store. Uh! Okay, so I guess he's waiting for him to do his business and then he's going to clean it up. Okay. <laughs> but but yeah, anyway, it's it's very it's very inefficient for me to go to this one particular uh, convenience store. But the other one that's actually closer that is it's more walkable, but even then the best time for me to go to that convenience store would be uh would be at this time of morning where it's it's 4:22 a.m. right now. It'd be very safe for me to walk across because there's hardly, there's next to no traffic at all. But um, during peak hours, uh-uh. It's usually pretty risky because there's still cars going back and forth and it's, so yeah. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of drifting off the subject here of noise pollution. So, but yeah, again, it's, it's one of the biggest reasons why I'm a night person. Because during the day, there's just too much noise, too much, you know, too much of everything. So. But yeah, this video I saw really hit home. And again, the name of the YouTube channel is not just bikes. I think it's all one word. So if anybody's interested, but um, 
it's not, just a fair, fair warning. It's not a very action. It's, his videos aren't exactly action packed. It's probably something um, probably something you see on PBS or something. Just you know, pretty peaceful. And I figured I also figured you know, I just went ahead and got a. Uh, I got season one of Dragon Ball. Yeah, I had to, I had to stop myself from saying Dragon Ball Z. It's just not a habit. Because up until recently, I never knew there was a regular Dragon Ball. I thought um. I thought the Dragon Ball franchise goes back, went as far went as far back as Dragon Ball Z, and that was it. I never knew there was a again a regular Dragon Ball, and I think you are, and I think we are done here. So let me let me put it on pause. Okay, um, let me let me go ahead and pick the one on the lower right here. I don't know if you can see it. Tokyo is extremely crowded and under state of emergency. This is kind of the same video that I that I showed yesterday. You never would have known it was a state of emergency. These guys, they were all calm, rational, and efficient. Dismiss. Full screen. So let's get this one going. Because I'm not quite done. Harajuku. Never heard of it. Okay, but anyway, um, so I figured, you know, I watched the, uh, yesterday I watched the very, very first episode of Dragon Ball. So I just decided, you know, hey, what the heck, why not? I just went ahead and bought season one. So I just went ahead and started watching, uh, episode two. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> they really skirt the line between, uh, between the, between rated PG and rated R. Like, they're showing, like, little boy genitals and everything. I mean, I mean, granted, granted. It was, when they drew, when they, when they drew Goku's genitals, I mean, it was basically just a, a half moon pointing down and a little circle. So, I mean, they, they didn't go into too much detail, but, I mean, you know it's there, though. Oh, Goku's wide open and exposed. You know, and they're even, um, they were showing a fair amount of skin on, on, um, uh, the girl. I forget her name. But yeah, they're showing you know they're showing a fair amount of skin on her as well. And they kind of got a little, little naughty in some places. And like and then once again, it's like, man, they're really blurring the line between PG and R. Like, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he was like doing the pussy slap and everything. I was half expecting to like Goku like walking the walking to, walk into the room where what's her face is watching TV. It's like. What are you watching? No, oh, get out of here. This is called pornography. Get out of here now or something like that. Or maybe what's that you're using? It's called a dildo. Beat it. You know, or something like that. But no, no. <laughs> Surprisingly no. But yeah, um Um, but um for those that saw yesterday's cast, I'm about to I'm about to repeat myself here, but um recently I started playing a game called um uh, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, I think that's how it goes, but it's, it's a 2D fighter, or it's a Dragon Ball Z 2D fighter, but I was very surprised, I actually like it, um, I was expecting to, I was expecting it to be just this major cringe fest, cause Skullgirls tried playing it, but I'm like, man, is it, this looks like a damn Newgrounds game. Like an adult, you know, an adult Newgrounds game. So like, eh, no. Um, Fantasy Strike, probably the first uh, 2D fighter that I ever consistently played. But the entire time, I'm, I'm like, my God, this, this. It was like another cringe fest. Like Jesus Christ, you know, they have a, they got a let, they got a, they got a hot lesbian chick in there, and you'll know it too, cause, you know, she's. She's got a rainbow paintbrush. She's got a rainbow skirt. Some of her attack, some of her attacks are rainbow attacks, and she even says so. Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow disc. I mean, you know, they kind of lay it on a little thick, but yeah, that that fantasy strike was super heavy on the cringe. Mechanically, though, it's actually a pretty revolutionary game. But again, it was just the uh, aesthetic. It was the aesthetics was one of the biggest reasons that. That really killed it for me on that game, but like like I said, so 
having to having to play you know a lot of these having to play a lot of these cringeworthy games. I went into Dragon Ball Z. I was expecting you know more of the same, but no, no, total, totally, totally shocked. I'm like, this is actually a pretty good game. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, for it, for for what it was, which is, you know, Dragon Ball Z. Basically, it's a kids' cartoon. So again, I was expecting to be like, oh god, this is, oh, you know, forced me to have to really grit my teeth and bear the story and the characters and all that. But again, no, very surprised. So definitely gonna be playing. So this is definitely a game I'm gonna be playing consistently. But, I mean, and, um, the game mechanics in and of themselves, um, it's a team-based game. You can control up to three players, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, I have a hard enough time trying to play one character, let alone three. But, uh, with this tutorial, um, but it's, it's, it's kind of easing me into it. So, it's not as bad. I think, um, Skullgirls... To their credit, kind of rectified this whole thing by giving you the option of either playing one character that's triple powerful, or you can uh, play as you can play a team of three normal normal characters, or you can play a you can play a two characters that are fifty percent more powerful. So they kind of address this balance because again, for guys like myself, I'm very I'm I'm very new to two D fighters basically. In the grand scheme of things, I'm a total noob, so so again, I it's gonna be very hard for me to get good with one character, let alone three of them. So and um, there is only um in Dragon Ball Z, there is only one single mode where you can play one on one, and it it strikes me as kind of a a quote unquote lesser a lesser mode. Uh, tournament, even though, I mean, even though, even from the, uh, episodes of Dragon Ball Z that I've watched, I mean, you, you know, it, it's got its, you know, it's got its tournament arc, it's got the big old tournament with the announcer and all that, one-on-one, -on -one, but, but playing this, playing the game itself, I'm given the impression that it's, it's, uh, it's just a mode that everybody plays when they're not doing arena matches or something, but, but yeah, but again, um, Dragon Ball Z Fighters is definitely going to be something that I'll probably be playing consistently. And, um, there's also an MMO mode to it, too. It, you know, it's an, it's, it's online. Again, I was kind of skittish on doing online mode because all the ones I've checked out in the past are basically just lists. They're just lists of, uh, of players looking for matches. And that's it. But this, in this one here, it's practically an MMO. Um, I don't think you can, uh, I don't think you can, you do a full-fledged chat or anything like that. You can, um, I think you can, uh, you can type down various, uh, preset chat messages. Um, I think there's emotes and stuff like that that you can use on other players. Um, but yeah, it's like a, it, it's a big old lobby. There's all the, I think, all the things that you can do offline, you can do online as well. And again, it's it's a big lobby, and um, you know, with lots of other players hanging out and stuff like that. Again, you can chat, you can interact with them, you can even start fights with them. Uh, you can kind of do the same thing in World of Warcraft too. Uh, you can um, you can challenge somebody to a duel. You can do that here in Dragon Ball Z as well. You can uh, I think uh, you can actually challenge up to three players, I think. So for a grand total of four players, like a two-on-two -two duel, I think. So you, so it doesn't have to be just a one-on-one. -on -one. So, but yeah, like us, and and on top of that, um, it's got a it's got a visual novel as well, which I think Melty Blood has something like that. But I, compared to what it has in Dragon Ball Z, it's nothing. Melty Blood is basically just longer cutscenes. That's it. So yeah, it, again, that's a total mind blow right there. So, uh, but anyway, well, as it's about 25 minutes now, um, 
but I, I said this at the start of the cast too that I was probably going to go over long on this one and indeed I have so my usual cutoff on these is 15 minutes it's just enough time for me to actually say you know say something but not too long that I blow myself out and that, uh, that I'm forced to look for stuff on my next cast so same way I do my workouts I don't go all I don't go all out hard and heavy usually I just do like a a few reps with mediocre weight or these days just isometrics so this way so I can do it every day so, but anyway um I'll just go ahead and cut it off here so so uh, thanks for tuning in and listening to me everybody I appreciate that and um I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning and tomorrow's will be the last one for the week because I'll be at work so but until then though Thanks again for dropping by, everybody. I appreciate it, and see you all next time. Bye for now.